This is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning, I'm Jim DeFeedy and welcome to Facing South Florida. Let's take a stroll down memory lane. Do you remember this moment from Facing South Florida back in March 2019? One has to think, well, there's a host body, and that host body has to have a certain amount of rights because at the end of the day, it is that body that, that carries this entire other body to term. And as technology moves along, a, a, a human body can exist outside of its host body earlier and earlier. And so then one has to think, to what time does the host body have veto power over this other life? You realize there are a lot of people who will hear you use phrases like host body and say to you, that's a woman. That's a person. Yeah. That's not a. That's you know. You're 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 sort of creating a scenario where you're looking at that that not so much as a person but as a host body. That was former House Speaker Jose Oliva. In recent weeks, that clip has once again gone viral and been viewed more than one and a half million times. Now I should point out that Oliva did later apologize for referring to pregnant women as host bodies. So why the renewed interest? It's because of the new law in Texas essentially banning all abortions, even in cases of rape and incest. And while Oliva is no longer in the legislature, Republican lawmakers in Florida have already signaled they will introduce their own Texas-style bill in the coming weeks. The person expected to lead the charge in Tallahassee to block the bill is Democratic State Senator Lauren Book. The abortion law in Texas is an assault, an out, outright assault on women's rights. There is no two different ways to look at it. After watching every bit of testimony that occurred, every hearing in, in Texas that went on, they very, very carefully, methodically worked through how they could strip women of their right to choose and have any autonomy over their own bodies. When the question was raised, a uh, rape and incest exemption, they were very clear, a baby should not suffer because of who his father is or what they may have done. Um, though that is the belief there. Um, it is terrible, horrible, and quite scary, quite frankly. And they've created this police-like state where the eyes are out there looking and reporting what happens. And they're financially incentivizing that, um, penalizing doctors for providing health care to women um, with this like vigilante type financial justice approach um, to, to stopping and really taking away a woman's right to choose. So let's explain that for a second, because I think it's really important, because this is sort of the novel approach that Texas has done. The element of this is uh, they've basically deputized every anti-abortion activist to be able to get a bounty if they are able to identify and go after those who are providing abortions. Is that, is, uh, uh, tell me if I'm explaining it wrong or how you would explain it. You are correct, you are 100% correct. You could, and, and it's anyone aiding and abetting in an abortion. Um, so, or helping a woman try to, to, to gain access to abortion services. So it could be the Uber or Lyft driver. It could be someone who's trying to financially help um, a woman in that way. And so you are 100% right, aiding and abetting, but also um, really making it impossible for doctors to provide care um, to women in that way. And so, you know, the term vigilante financial justice is being used really because that's what it is. Um, a sort of vigilantism that is quite scary. So how much of that bill do you think we'll see here in Florida? Look, I think that we're definitely going to be presented with a heartbeat ban bill this session, 100%. There is no doubt in my mind. We've had a lot of conversations um, with leadership in the Senate about the things that are just from the Texas bill that cannot happen here in the state of Florida. Um, and really, you know, in my for, for my piece of it, uh, any, any thought that a survivor of rape or incest um, should have to carry a baby to term um, is cruel and unusual punishment beyond anything that I can even comprehend. But if the legislature, let's say those who are in positions of authority in the state legislature decide to, all right, we'll give you the rape and incest uh, carve out. You, you know, people who are victims of rape and incest can get can get an abortion, uh, it's just everyone else won't be able to. Is that good enough for you? No, of course not. We are going to fight um, and bring every bit of arsenal that we have at our disposal to fight uh, this bill because we don't believe that that exists. Most should exist. 
No woman knows that she's pregnant at six weeks. No one. If you have an irregular period, so then let's call it what it is, a ban. Now I would say to you and suggest the reason that what happened in Texas is so different and unique is their approach. That vigilanteism, the financial vigilanteism piece really, where we're setting out and, and anyone who's aiding and embedding a woman in getting reproductive health care taken care of um, was their approach. I, I, I would hope that our legislature has um, you know, a little bit more wisdom to look at that and think that is not what we want to do here. Let's be absolutely clear. Uh, a fetal heartbeat bill, quote unquote fetal heartbeat, and I should know that some doctors say that what is often detected as a fetal heartbeat can be misinterpreted as one as well, but it roughly turns around the, the six week mark. Can you explain for, for well, I, I think this is the situation, I mean, I feel uncomfortable because we're, I, we're now in the position of having to, you know, have an explanation as to women reproductive uh, methods and Again, I'm, 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 I'm a guy. I'm, I'm, you are right I, now. You know, like, Jim, look at work, how break, it, break, you down, are. break down the menstrual cycle for me, I guess is what I'm asking for. And I am so happy to do that for you. Typically, a woman would have their cycle every 28 days, right? And this brings up a point that maybe it will feel less uncomfortable. When people are diagnosed with can cancer, whether it's stage one, two, three, or four, when do you really know, right? It's between you and your doctor, you have to figure that out. If you are a woman who is not regular on her cycle, if you're, exper if you're experimenting with birth control, if you're just, if you're exercising too much, if you're under too much stress, your period can be irregular. You may not know. Why is it that we should be placing any sort of limit on when and how a woman has a right to have this medical decision decided with her doctor. We shouldn't be. And as uncomfortable as you are right now having this conversation, I can see it on your body. I can see it in your body language. This is a decision that women should be addressing. But again, there are not, there are no laws on the books that dictate how and what should happen to your body or things that can and should happen to your body. Um, that is not the case for us and it isn't okay. And I think that we will, and I know that we will work hard to make sure that we use every, every tool in our toolbox to stop any piece of legislation from going through like this. When you talk about those carve outs, no, that's the basis of what is human decency. As a survivor myself, and you've covered it, a lot of your viewers know about my story and my past. There's some things about my past that people don't know because I don't share it. But at a point in time, I was sexually assaulted by a man who could have gotten me pregnant. To think that the state could possibly sentence me to carry that baby to term against my will that is more cruel than what that human did to me. That is something that no one should have to bear. There, there's also the element of not every uh, rape victim, not every incest victim wants to report their rape oh. or incest. And so therefore, how do you then provide them the service that they may very well need if at some point they don't want to come forward and tell their story to the police where they feel they'll be re-traumatized all over again. Well, correct. And I think those are some things that we're going to have to work through in the process. Do you have to show a police report? So now are we forcing women to have to share pieces of story? Again, what we're doing is treating women as property. That's what's happening here. And let's make no mistake about it. It's how are we limiting and taking away any and all control from women? And that is very clear. And we shouldn't be doing that. It is dangerous. We are walking down a very dangerous path. When women don't have the authority or the ability to make decisions about what happens in their life, that is completely and totally inappropriate. My daughter, I, women across the state have a right to decide what happens to their bodies and in their in their life. You know, you had been the committee chairwoman for for the committee that would have heard any any issues related to abortion. The Senate president took that committee chairmanship away from you and has now given it to State Senator Ileana Garcia here in in uh, South Dade. Why do you think the senator stripped you of that committee? You know, I think that obviously we all serve at the pleasure of the president and you'd have to ask him um, sort of 
why that change was made. I do think that clearly as the um, Democratic leader in the Senate, um, there's a natural tension between um, the leader of the body being of the opposite party. I wish Senator Garcia, Chair Garcia well, um, serving as the vice chair, will be happy to support her in that role and look forward to continuing to do the work that I have done before I came into the body and after I leave um, the Senate to protect um, women, children, and vulnerable elderly adults in our state. Republican Senate President Wilton Simpson has agreed to come on the show. We look forward to discussing this issue with him. Stay with us.